So if you're in the market for a reasonably priced, lightweight, two-person camping tent, I may have the answer for you. Stay tuned. Recently, I was contacted by a company out of China that manufactures outdoor equipment by the name of Nature Hike Outdoors. And they had mentioned that they had watched some of my videos online and felt I might be a good product ambassador for some of their products. They offered to send me one of their tents, which was, by coincidence, a really good thing because I was in the market for a new tent. I had dug out my aging Eureka two-man autumn wind tent and decided it had been getting, well, it had seen better days, and it was time to replace it. The other coincidence was, it was Nature Hike that I was looking at for a replacement tent. So when they offered to send me their Star River 2 tent, I readily accepted it. Okay, so I am in my backyard. This is not a wood setup. I have to get out into the woods and put this up and give it a lot more testing than it's going to get here in my backyard. But I think for an initial overview of the tent, I can give you a pretty good idea of what this tent is all about. So let's take it down to the ground. I'll open it up and break it out to its separate components. I have some options in the way you can save weight and uh, try some different uh, setups with the tent. If you're interested, keep watching. Okay, so here's the total package of the tent, the way it comes and arrives from China. And the overall length, and of course I'm going to give you all the measurements and all the weights in the show notes below, plus provide the links to the Nature Height website so you can see the specs as they list them as well. But the weights and the sizes I'm going to give you are what I measured. I didn't take these off of the website. This is what I measured on my home scales, my kitchen scales, and my measuring tape. So total package right here as you see it is 4.7 pounds so not ultra light but not bad you know it, it, there are heavier tents my older autumn wind is a little bit heavier than this and a little bit bulkier than this with about the same internal space so 4.7 pounds 1990 grams or 1.9 kilograms and as you can see it is fairly loose in the bag which means you can squeeze it down and get a more compact size now let's talk about length the overall length is 16 inches and that is dictated by the poles so you can see the poles inside the package here if i were to remove the poles which i sometimes do and carry them separate from the rest of the tent i could squeeze that package down into a much smaller form factor making it fit inside my backpack that much better so 16 inches in length and I measure seven and a half inches in diameter. That's as it sits there loose. Now it looks big, but I measured it and that's what I got is seven, seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters in diameter across here. And again, you can squish it down. So there's a good view of the Nature Height logo. I really like this sill nylon. I do have sill nylon tarps, but uh, this is really nice. It seems to be fairly well made. All right, let's take this apart and I'll show you the individual components. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways that I think I might be able to use this, saving some weight and going with a smaller bulk factor in my, my pack. Okay, so I've separated the components that came inside of this stuff sack. I'll just put the stuff sack for a side. By the way, the stuff sack is kind of interesting. If for some reason you either don't have experience or haven't used it for a long while, then you do have instructions on how to set the tent up on the piece of paper. It does also act as a bit of a cover inside of the top of the bag when you put everything inside, just to keep a little bit of moisture out. It's just made of the, the Tyvek, actually, that appears to be a lightweight synthetic material, so it is going to provide some waterproofness. Now, I would never recommend that you take your tent out with you into the field, set it up for the first time based on instructions. Do like I'm doing in that set it up in your backyard if you have that opportunity. So this is not my first time setting the tent up in my backyard, but I wanted to make sure I could do this before showing it to you. So just a nice extra with all the information about the company on there. So I'm going to put the stuff sack aside for a second and let's just look over the tent components and then I'll show you a couple of uh, combinations. So starting from the smallest on this side, this is the tent pegs. It comes with 11 tent pegs. I'll show you one of the tent pegs now, but I'm going to give you close-ups of all the components as we assemble the tent in a minute. But they are a lightweight triangular stake aluminum tent peg with a small reflective cord on the end, notch to accept the tie out point, and they are six inches in length, thereabouts. It also comes with additional tie out lines or guy lines that can be used with the tent for windy conditions. I'll show you those when, we, when it comes time. So those are the tent pegs. 
This is the floor mat, as they call it, or mat, or we often call them footprint. So this is a small rectangular piece of 20D silicone treated nylon with buckles on it, which is intended to act as the footprint under the main body of the tent. Now, you can lighten your load if you want to drop this off, but it's not especially heavy, and I will put the, this in my show notes below. But the footprint itself is only 9 ounces, or 230 grams, so it's not a lot extra. And it is well worth having something like this to protect the bottom of your tent. It will last you a lot longer if you're able to protect it. Yes, it may provide a little extra waterproofness, but I think primarily it's intended for protecting from sharp sticks and stones from poking through the bottom of your tent floor. And, you know, I have a couple of options I want to show you where you can use this separate from the tent itself. There are the aluminum poles, all hooked together with bungee cords. You'll see those in a minute, color-coded as well to make it easier to put this together. This is the main body of the tent, and I have it loosely laying here because when I put my uh, tents and things in stuff sacks, some people like to roll them up and get the smallest form factor. I tend to stuff them loosely like I might a hammock and can actually take up more space inside of the stuff sack and afterwards compress it into a smaller form if I stuff it loosely. But there is the tent. Nice colors with a light gray top and a, a silicone treated 20D ripstop nylon bottom on it as well. And here is the fly. Okay, so if I were to repack this tent without the footprint, I would get a weight of 3 pounds, 14 ounces, or 1,760 grams. So that's the 9 ounces missing by taking this out. So that's one combination if you're trying to save a little bit of weight. Let me show you something else I think is really kind of interesting. We're going to set it up so you get an idea what I'm talking about. But I think you can save a lot of weight by doing this. Ditching the tent itself. Take the tent out of the picture. Bring the footpr footprint back in. So all you have is tent, footprint, poles and pegs and you really don't even need all the pegs and, and guy lines for this so you could take a few of those out as well and with that package you get down to three pounds two ounces or 1480 grams and you're if you're wondering what that looks like using just the fly just the footprint and just the poles well I'm going to set it up and show you but it is an option it's an option outside of mosquito season but it's an option nonetheless all right the tent itself just for a final wait and again I'll put this all in the show notes the tent itself weighs in at one pound, five ounces. So, you know, if you were in exceptionally good weather, but you do need the protection from the bugs, you're not concerned about being wet overnight, and you, it's, maybe it's extremely hot, maybe you'll leave the fly home. Take the poles, take or leave the footprint home, and have that combination going for you. You could always uh, make sure that you have something that you can cover over, cover over the tent, but if you're going to do that, it might as well be the fly. So that's a nice lightweight, hot weather, dry weather option where you need the protection from insects. All right, now we've shown you the components. Let's put the tent together. Okay, so let's set the tent up. What I'm going to do is take the tent and set it up on the area of my lawn right behind me here, and I'm going to have to readjust the camera to do that, but I'll record this in real time without edit so you can see what it is for me to set it up. I will fast forward it so you don't have to watch it in real time, and we'll get the tent set up until it's full configuration, and then I'll bring you in, show you some of the details, and then I'll show you some of the alternative setups that I've come up with. Okay, I decided to stop for a second just to make sure that you can see what I've done. I wasn't even positive you were in the frame. So I have the floor mat or footprint set up with the aluminum frame arched over it. And just a couple of things. You'll be able to see these again later, but I want to make sure you can see them now. And that is that the fly or the floor print has a nice piece of nylon with a grommet 
and a buckle, one of the quick release buckles, and a piece of reflectix line here, here, where it holds the temp peg out. One thing you want to make sure when you lay this down, just make sure you lay it so the buckles are facing up. You probably could assemble it with the buckles facing down, but it's uh, a lot easier with the buckles facing up. You'll also notice that the poles are color coded. So the silver poles I have at the back end of the tent, that'll be the more the uh, less high end of the tent. And the red end are at the higher end, so that would indicate that's where you want to uh, sit inside the tent inside. Unique to this tent in their lineup is this crossbar or spread it bar, and I'll show you how that works in a second. So I just wanted to show you that. I'll back up, reset the camera, and keep on going. Let's take a quick walk around the tent set up in this configuration without the fly. I'll be able to show a few more details. You probably, if you flip back, if you didn't notice it when I first did it, uh, the way I set the tent up is I put the footprint out first, put the aluminum frame up, then took the tent out of the bag, spread it across the floor of the footprint, and attached it at its four corners. And I'll show you those corners in a second. The reason I did that is, as it is in my yard right now, it's damp from the overnight dew. So rather than get the floor of the tent wet, I decided to wait until the footprint was out, and then I could spread the tent out over the footprint so the floor doesn't get wet. All right, let me zoom in on a couple of features here. So right down here you can see where the Fastex buckle is, and there's actually one for the tent. There's another one underneath it, I can expose it right there, for the fly. And that's used, or not the fly, sorry, the footprint, but that's used where you can snap or buckle the fly either into the footprint itself or onto the tent. You'll also notice that there is grommets in the tie out or the nylon piece that comes out from the end of the tent, and that matches up with the grommet underneath. On, on the footprint, so you, the pole actually goes through both grommets and holds the two of them in place at the same time. And the tent peg is pegged out. Now at this point I could pull these tent pegs out because it is a freestanding tent. The reason I have the tent pegs, and I don't have them as far in as they could go, the reason I have the tent pegs, or might use the tent pegs and keep them in, is so that it doesn't blow away because in this configuration the wind could come up underneath the tent and uh, lift it and move it away. So this just keeps it in place if it happens to be windy. So here is a close-up on the silver bars, and they match up to the silver or gray tie-out. So that helps you set this up because there is a difference between the front and the back. Here is the joint where the aluminum poles come in. I took my time setting up the aluminum poles. I suspect if I just tossed them in the air, they would have pretty much assembled themselves because the shock cord does seem to pull the ends in. But the reason I took my time, and I would recommend doing that for anybody setting up any aluminum tent, regardless of, of the quality or price, maybe even more so with the expensive one, is making sure you don't damage the poles. So take your time to set the poles up so that you don't damage the ends. Your tent will last that much longer, and uh, I suppose it'll help avoid a bad situation. If you're out in, it's raining, and you need to get this set up, you don't want it failing on you. So just walking around the tent. Again, this end is red, and you can see here where the footprint is separate from the, uh, the tent, and I just only because I didn't take the time to make sure that they were placed in together, one inside the other, like, see if I can start, there we go, so they're in together. Very fine, no seam mosquito mesh on this. Even our smallest biting flies here in Nova Scotia, we call them noceums. They're not even going to get through this. Now with that fine a mesh, you will get airflow, but it's going to be somewhat restricted. So it would be warm. Just the mesh alone will keep some warmth inside of the tent. Here's a unique feature and one of the things that really makes this tent stand out. It has two doors, one on either side. 
I'll show you more detail inside the tent so I don't forget the fly on and everything set up. Yeah, two doors, that's kind of nice. Which means if you had two people inside of this, and I highly doubt that you'll get two people inside this unless you're very close to each other, that, uh, you know, if you have to get up in the middle of the night, you don't have to crawl over the other person to get out of the tent. It's quite a nice feature. It also means that the fly will have two vestibules so that you could open up both vestibules and have a cross flow of breeze through the tent. All right, I'm going to put the fly on the tent. I'll have to put the camera back on the stand for you to see that. And then we'll take another look at some of the details. Take a quick walk around the tent. So I've set the tent up. This is fully assembled. Actually, no, it's not. I still have to get the guy lines out on the ends. More or less fully assembled in its basic configuration. There, I just put in the guy lines, and I'm going to give you a close up on that in a second. Apologize for the walk around shakiness. All right, let's take a look at the guy line here. So the Gylon has a tensioning device built into it. It works very well for tensioning. It actually kind of locks the cord in, but you can tension it. If you didn't have that, of course, you could always use a taut line hitch or something like that, but this works out very well like it, like it, as it is. They come up, they're sewn on, they're reinforced. There is a double stitching over this point right here to hold the nylon in, and you can see a re reinforcement. Now you're looking at it from the outside, of course, but there is a reinforcement for to prevent strain from tearing out. And that's the same at all four corners. Again, same. Looking at this corner, you can see the reinforcement and double stitching there. So well done on those corners. Now, it has more tie-outs, as you can see here. If it was windy, and this would probably be the end that I would be working from because I would face the back end into the wind, I have extra guy lines and pegs that I can tot, uh, tie onto this and uh, stretch them out and peg the tent down. It had to be pretty windy though in order for that to be necessary, but they are two to a side, as you can see another one there, and two to the end as well. Here's a nice feature for ventilation. It has one of the little stand-up windows right here. So there's a little piece of Velcro and a stiffened piece of material that you can either hold up to add ventilation or you can fold it down if you want to decrease vent ventilation and the Velcro would keep it closed there. More of the reflective tie-outs, two to a side and two on each end. Now here's a nice feature. I've mentioned this with another previous tent review that it didn't have it and this tent does have it and that is Velcro on the Stormfly that goes up and down the zipper. So just the way of setting up the tent under its own tension the Velcro finds each other and that's going to help keep any water from entering in through the zipper. Now this is the the uh, vestibule inside so the water is not going to go against the tent itself. Just a little extra protection. It's kind of like that. It makes a nice a nice added touch. Alright now I'm going to have to set the camera down for a moment. I'll open the tent up and we'll go inside and get a look, an idea of the space inside. Oh, I don't think I mentioned this. Each of the four corners where those quick release, release buckles are, there is a tensioning. So that once I got the, the fly on, I could just pull on that and it pulled the, the fly back down. And that is good to have because I don't think it makes a difference what tent it's made from. If it's made from nylon, they do tend to have a bit of stretch and a bit of shrink depending on whether the weather is dry or wet. So when they do get wet, the nylon does tend to shrink. That's not a big issue, it's just something to be aware of. The shrinkage is more of an issue. If you set it up and the tent shrinks after you get it set up, you can put a lot of strain on the pole. So it's nice to be able to release the pressure once it's set up as well. Now you can see what the, the value of those spreaders bars are. They're coming out, they're inside the little pockets. I'll show you that inside the tent in a second. But they give you a lot more room inside the tent. Okay, that's enough of a walk around. Let's go inside. All right, tent is set up. I have the two doors rolled back and the screen door open on this side. 
let's go inside and have a look. And you'll notice that when you roll the doors back to get them out of the way, those same tie-out points that are the reflective on the outside that you could put the additional guy lines on also double serve with a little toggle to hold the doors back. And that's the same on both sides. There's also a set of toggles along the floor of the tent. It is a bathtub style tent so it does come up around and where the door attaches there's another little toggle here and then a little loop on the inside that you could roll that up and get that out of the way if you wanted to leave this wide open. So inside you can see I have my Cedar Summit uh, air pad and a small lightweight, super lightweight Marmot Nano Wave 55 sleeping bag, my summer sleeping bag set up inside. Now this is a very compact setup. It's not a roomy thing. It's meant to be light and fast. So it's still, you can get an idea of just how much room I have inside. And I thought this is appropriate. This is the pillow that I bought for myself. Nature Hike. Nice little air pillow that you blow up. Takes the smallest form faster factor. I can almost completely enclose it with my hand once I've uh, got it deflated. So very small, very lightweight. But this isn't about the, these additions. It's just an idea to give you just how much room is inside. So you can see this is the head end. And uh, there is plenty of room for setting up. Now if you like to kneel, and st or you certainly won't stand, but if you like to kneel when you're getting dressed, you're going to be a little bit challenged by this, but there's more than enough room to sit up and get changed or whatever else you need to do inside of the tent. Let's get inside. Ooh, it's about 32 degrees here in Halifax with a high 80% humidity, so the Humidex is well up into the near 40 degrees. That's Celsius, of course, so I'm finding this challenging with the heat right now, and even more so inside of the tent. Nice and light. The sun comes through that gray material very nicely. At the head end of the tent, there are three pockets, which is kind of nice. Two small ones on either side, large enough for certainly for a cell phone, wallet, maybe your headlamp. Same on the other side. And then a larger one just above my head, so I can put quite a bit up there give you an idea there is a center hook for a light of some type if you want to use that down to the foot end and when I lay down on this now I'm only five foot ten my feet are not touching the end of the tent and I still have a couple of inches from my head to the other end of the tent so the tent inside dimensions are four foot four in width and I'll put the dimensions below, and seven foot in length. So if you need longer than seven feet, this is probably not the tent for you. Having said that though, there's no reason why you couldn't sleep corner to corner in here. Okay, let's take a look at the door on the back side. Two zippers. They run very smoothly, no indications of binding whatsoever. And you can see the amount of room I have outside of the tent to the vestibule. Now, it's not a lot. Certainly it's not a lot. You're not going to set up and cook breakfast out here, although that's not a good idea inside an enclosed area. But in a rainy situation, you could roll back one of these flaps and cook outside of there very carefully. But plenty of room for your boots, your backpack, and again, you've got the same amount of room on the other side. All right, I have to get outside. This is hot in here right now. Okay, I thought I'd just give you one more view of the tent from the outside before we take the fly off and try something different here. But uh, this is, I have both of the vestibules open wide. That's a real advantage to this tent right here, having doors on both sides. Now I do have the screens down, so it would be subject to bugs coming in, I guess. But for maximum ventilation, get that cross breeze through here. What an advantage that to have these two doors, seriously is. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the tent apart and as far as I'm going to take the tent out from underneath the fly and show you an option that you can have for a lighter weight setup. All right, stand by for that. If you're camping outside of bug season and you're looking to save a little weight, this might be an option worth considering. So what I've done without removing the fly is I went inside and just removed the tent. So now I have the fly with the frame and the footprint. Let me show you what that looks like inside. Lots of room in here now. Not that there wasn't before, but there's a lot more room in here as you can see. This is pretty cool when you think about it. Oh, get inside. All kinds of room. Maximum ventilation on the ends. Oh, by the way, here's a small feature I wanted to show you that I failed to show you before. 
These little tie-outs with the small hook on it, it's almost like a plastic carabiner. What they're intended for is there's a small loop on the base of the tent. So if you want to get that just that little bit more room out of your tent, you can reach in underneath and hook this on the loop, and that's just going to pull the wall of the tent just a little bit further away from your feet. And they exist at both ends. There's the other, the other one hanging down down there. So we're inside of Under the Fly, sitting on the footprint, and one of the things I wanted to show you was the seams. Now, sometimes when you get a tent, these aren't sealed, but these are not only sealed, they're taped. So there's actually a waterproof sew nylon tape going over all the seams. That's probably not showing up really good there in that light. Let's see if I can do it away from the sun. Hopefully it's sitting up here. There's a tape going over that for absolute waterproofness. Now, I haven't had this out in the rain, so I can't confirm just how waterproof it is. I also can't confirm the durability, but from my initial impression so far is this is a beautiful sill nylon tarp. You know, compares with my good expensive sill nylon tarp, so I have no reason to think that it's going to leak. But uh, that's what the, a long time test will, will show you. One small thing inside here that I would like Nature Hike to take note of. I have mentioned it, they are interested in knowing what I will come up with, and that is this. So, looking up at the center of the tent, we have the spreader bar that goes across. When the tent is set up, there are two little nylon straps that have a little built-in pouch that allows those poles to go inside to hold the tent up. Well, they, in my mind, they also act to protect the, protect the fly from un, undue stress, extra pressure provided by the, the poles. So you can see right here, there's a fair amount of tension right on the fly where it's touching there. Here it's just off, off of that seam, but there's a fair amount of tension. I can't say that it will poke through, but why take the risk? So I have come up with a small fix, if you will. I will have to set the camera down for a moment to get this on, but once I have it on, I will show you what I'm doing. And this is something you can do for yourself, or hopefully Nature Hike is able to fix this in the future. All right, let me show you what I've got. Okay, this is my fix. I decided, to, I took a, the idea from what was on the tent itself. There was a piece of nylon webbing that came over, doubled back on itself, created a little pocket, and that's what you put the end of the spreader bar in to hold the tent up, and I think also to protect the fly. So all I did is went into my stash of materials, got out some one-inch nylon webbing, folded a, a section in half, approximately five inches in half, and just sewed it down each side. That's all it is. And of course, just melted the ends to keep it from fraying. So it's just a little tiny pocket sewn up on each side, just big enough to go over the end of the pole, and you can see how it distributes the pressure off of the end of the pole, and the nylon is not stressed quite so badly. So I have those, they're made up, they cost me nothing. If you can come up with something like that, something small just to distribute the weight or the pressure over the pole, I think it will extend the life of the uh, fly. All right, so this is one lightweight option. Again, just a little bit of a look around. You can see there's a lot of ventilation here with the floor the way it is. But remember, I did say this was for use for set up inside or outside of bug season when you're not concerned about mosquitoes, but you want to have a little rain protection. All right, I have one more set up I think you'll like, and then we'll wrap this video up. Okay, one final option for an ultralight setup. It occurred to me with the floor print, or mat as the Nature Hike calls it, of four foot four by seven foot length, that that would make a pretty good size minimalist tarp. Something that I could take in my backpack when I'm not expecting to stay out, but I need a little rain protection, or if I really do think I could stay out and just need that minimal amount of protection. So you can set it up as a small tarp. Now this is an ultralight setup. I am using a couple of hiking poles, a couple of pieces of paracord. All I've done is just staked out the back corners back there. I do have a stick covered in the little bag that comes with the mat, uh, just holding the back of the tarp up just to get a little bit more room inside of it. And uh, you can see the length of it with my sleep pad underneath. So it's actually big enough to do that with. Now, rather than the stick, if I had my backpack, I'd probably put my backpack back there, just making sure it didn't get wet. Of course, if it had a rain cover or a garbage bag or something I could put over it, it could hold the back of the tent up just to get a little bit more height. I could also cause one of these poles to be lower than the other just to get a little bit more rain runoff if it did happen to rain. One thing I think I'd like to see Nature Hike add to the footprint is another set of these little tie-outs. Doesn't have to have the buckle, but a little tie-out, either just a loop or a loop with the grommet 
in the center. That would just give a little bit more options for tying it out in this fashion. So, using it like a little tarp, or carrying it as a footprint for a larger tarp. Another use, another added value with this tent setup. All right, that's everything I think I need to show you. Let's wrap this video up. The Star River 2 by Nature Hike Outdoors. So again, this was provided me by Nature Hike for testing and review. So I've had the tent for just a little while now and I do haven't had it out in the woods yet and I haven't had it out in a good rainfall yet. So there's a lot more testing to do and that's what I intend to do over the rest of the summer. I do have some occasions where I'll be taking this into the woods and putting it to a real test. And then by the end of the summer, early fall, I hope to come back and give you more of a long-term review, at least a long enough that I can get a sense of how it's holding up and how it performs. Everything I've seen so far just screams quality to me and value. Good quality materials, well put together, no missed stitching, no uh, poor design. There's nothing about this tent that wasn't well thought out. With those two small things that I think would make additions to the tent, they're not necessary, just additions. And they are, again, some little type of thing that you can put over the spreader bars to, to uh, keep them from poking through the tent fly. I don't know that it will happen, but just to make sure it doesn't happen. And it would be nice to have those extra little loops on the floor mat or the footprint so that you can use it a little bit more versatile. All right. Everything about this I like. I am putting all the notes on the size and the weights and everything in the show notes below, as well as a link to Amazon where you can purchase this tent for yourself. You may want to go over to the Nature Hike site and just see what other materials or what other uh, outdoor equipment they have. Uh, so far, everything I've gotten from them, which has only been a few things, but everything I've gotten, I'm impressed with. Not just good, val or good for value for the money, but a good product overall. Okay, so if you've enjoyed this video, and you want to see more like it, you may consider subscribing to my channel. But until then, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.